Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, there's been a lot going on since the last time I did a video. I really don't have any excuse on why I haven't put anything up, but my apologies. Um, have had a property that um, getting, doing renovation on it and doing owner finance on it. It's been extremely time consuming. It's been very um, financially intensive as well. Um, it seems like every day you go to Home Depot, it's minimum three, four hundred dollars. Well, once you do that five days a week, plus making payroll and everything like that, um, and then the regular maintenance that you go through with the other rental properties, it can be very expensive. However, we're on the downhill run. We're like right at the end and everything like that. So we'll get this done. Um, I've had a couple people move out just through, had one gentleman that, uh, he was in an upstairs unit. Unfortunately, he got injured at work. And so he's not able to climb stairs. And then had another gentleman that, um, has a grandparent that is at the point that they're not able to live on their own. So they moved out, moved in with their grandparent to help take care of them, so to speak. So, you know, I mean, these are just things that happen when you have, you know, a portfolio of size, so to speak. So, um, then the lady that's worked for me for over seven years, she has gotten bacteria under one of her contact lenses and basically has gone blind in one eye. And um, she can see varying degrees of light at different points in her eye. Um, however, not able to do any work, uh, doesn't have her equilibrium, and so has a appointment for a specialist on the 30th. Um, you know, so that's been a huge hindrance as well. Um, I came down with something last week, and that has been uh, brutal. Basically, didn't get a whole lot done for the whole week. Um, totally sucked. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And, um, you know, all you can do is move forward and do the best you can with what you got, you know. And unfortunately, um, you know, I really wanted this situation with this um, house we're redoing. I wanted it to be perfect when the guy moved in, um, you know. And unfortunately, through bad planning on my part and things that I could not control, that's not going to happen. It is what it is, you know. Um, no sense in crying over spilled milk, wipe it up and move on. So that's what we're doing. Um, the $14,000 house, uh, got the roof done on it. Now the rewire has been done on it. Had some repairs done to the floor and then had, uh, plywood put down on the floors. The situation is, is that they had hardwood floor down right on top of the floor joist with no subfloor. So it wasn't real rigid. Um, hardwood floor is very strong, okay? Don't get me wrong on that. Um, but it just wasn't um, where I would like for it to be. So not only did we fix the floor, but as far as there was a part where the rain had been coming in because of the roof having a hole in it, and it had buckled. And so after that, what we ended up doing was... Um, pardon me, going ahead and um, cutting out the bad part and then putting uh, decking in it and then put plywood over top of it. Now, this is a situation that normally what I would like to do is go ahead and put central heat and air, spend a bunch of money on this place and be done with it and not have to mess with it for another 10 years. Now, um, the quality of work that we'll be performing will be that we're not going to have to mess with it for 10 to 15 years. However, I'm not going to go and put all that extra money into it. And the reason for that is, is that I've really been looking at the way that I do things in the sense that, you know, it gives me a lot of emotional satisfaction to say, oh man, I got this property and we totally redid it and everything. And now, voila, there you have it. Take a look at it. Okay. And I've talked about how much your emotions and how much your ego, especially with me, how much those play into success, okay? 
So then it becomes a situation where I'm sitting there asking myself, okay, if I do all of this work and, um, you know, what's about the best I can expect to rent it for? Probably about 1200 a month. Well, if I don't do all that work and everything, but I make it nice, decent, and clean, what will I be able to rent it for? About 1000 a month. So does it make sense to go spend another 25000 to make an extra 200 a month? No, it does not. And doing it this way will get us up and going um, approximately two and a half months quicker. So there'll be added revenue from that. Um, and it's just, you know, one of those things that I look at with myself, you know, and uh, the lady that works for me, her name's Carla. We had bought a property or I'd bought a property about, you know, January. And that, um, you know, she told me, she said, look, she said, I know there's a lot of things you would like to fix and correct and make good on this and everything like that. But the simple fact is, is that we can put some paint, clean this up, do a few things and boom, you're ready to go. And instead of going and spending thousands and thousands of dollars, and she's right, you know, um, I probably have the need for probably got a hundred thousand that I need to spend on just roofs and you know some um, they are not a situation that is pressing um, I got one or two that are and I'll be doing something about them but the rest of the time it's just you know it, I know that they're getting due they're close you know in this area in the part of the country it's 15 to 20 years is what you get out of a roof and that's it so um, you know and then hey we are looking at a hurricane coming in the next two days. And so, you know, we got that to face. Um, I did start a new guy. Um, he's 18 and seems to have a decent head on his shoulders. Worked one day so far. Um, we will be uh, doing work again today. Um, you know, so, um, and I try not to pass any kind of judgment um, unless, you know, there's something that's just totally blaring that, you know, jumps out at you and, and nothing like that has, um, uh, normal stuff. And, um, you know, I, um, and we'll, uh, you know, give it a couple of days and then have a talk and, uh, see if we can get some correction on, uh, way he does some things and whatnot. So we'll just have to see, um, you know, I really don't know what else to say, um, there's a guy that my first mentor, um, and I met him maybe 20 years ago, somewhere in there. And I had asked him the other day, uh, because it seems like the more successful I become, the less, and it doesn't happen often, but I get to a point where I just don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to deal with people. I don't want anything, okay? And, you know, I talked to him about it and he said exactly the way that I felt. He said, man, it's almost like you get suicidal, but just not really. And I totally felt that deeply because that's almost what it is. And so, you know, it's great to know that I'm not alone. You know, I also know when I get in these situations, I tell people, you know, I don't keep it internally. I tell people and let them know exactly where I'm at. Um, you know, and I also don't act on it in the sense that I think that it's one of those things that, you know, if I don't get out of bed one day, then the next day it becomes easier. And then you blink your eye. And then before you know it, it's been three months since you left the house. I don't think that's a good thing for me. That's for sure. So, um, you know, I've got that that I've been dealing with. And then I'm also looking at um, trying to get this thing wrapped up and be retired you know, or at least get it more to a point of where, you know, I'm not having to work three, four days a week. And, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing. I always thought it was going to be a money issue with retirement, but that's the furthest thing from the truth. It has to do with mindset, you know, and I had a father with a great work ethic. Um, you know, all of the men that I want to trade places with that I emulate. They all have fantastic work ethics as well. 
the thing about it is, is that I'm 53. The average white male in this country lives till they're 74, which means I have 21 more summers, 21 more Christmas, 21 more Halloween, you know? And the other part of it that you really have to ask yourself is how much longer do I really have to be able to go and do and do everything that I would like to physically in this capacity that I'm able to at this point? Because <coughs> we start to slow down. And the thing is, is that, you know, life keeps moving. And if I don't educate myself on fitness and eating right, and then doing some things to prolong that, then I invite obesity. I invite disease to come in. Just the same as, you know, the economy keeps on moving regardless if I do or not. Okay. So my dollar actually purchases less. And if I don't educate myself and then make some financial moves to keep my money on track with inflation, then my purchasing power, my standard of living, my freedom choices that I have actually goes down. And that's why it's so critical to become financially literate to be able to move forward and do some things differently. I had a guy call me yesterday, man, you got any work or anything like that? And I turn down work all the time, folks. I do. My phone rings constantly. And I Man, I, I, you know, uh, this person bought the house that we were living in. They evicted all three, you know, three of the families. And, you know, and I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to pay for this room so my family doesn't end up uh, being homeless. I'm assuming he's living in a hotel. Um, my truck's down. I got to get, you know, uh, uh you know, I found a transmission, it's $450, but I got to raise this money and I got to, you know, and the list keeps going on and on, you know, and I hear about these stories all the time. And really it all comes down to is, is I did not financially prepare myself for any type of emergency that comes up. And the thing is, is that, you know, like, Two months ago, I had a nurse call me and say, hey, I'm looking for a place to live. I need to be about eight or $900. And I'm like, you know, I don't even know if you can get a garden shed for eight or 900 bucks. You know, of course, it needs to be in a good part of town. The single woman doesn't fear living there and everything like that. And it's like, you know, at that, at that price, it just does not exist, hon. Um, you know, and then proceeds to tell me that she's been a nurse for 30 years. And I'm like, how are you a nurse for 30 years and you don't have, you know, some kind of pension paying three, $4,000 a month, but folks, they're all over. I encourage you take control of your financial destiny right now, today, figure it out. If you don't have a savings account, go open one up, put 10 bucks in there, you know, whatever it is, get started. Okay. Um, and don't lie to yourself or to me and say, well, if I had more money, I'd be better. No, you won't. The reason you don't have any money is because you're not better. You get better, then you will have more money. I guarantee that, okay? If you can't handle five bucks, you can't handle 50,000. I don't make the rules, but I got to be honest about them. They do exist, and this is them, you know? Um, the thing is, is that if I'm careless with my money and I have more money, guess what? I'm more careless, and I have more money to be careless with. It's not like all of a sudden I'm just going to boop. Oh, yeah. Hello, Mr. Investor. Let me go ahead and get in some stocks and some mutual funds and, you know, some ETFs. Oh, yeah, I want to buy a little bit of real estate and everything. No, that ain't going to happen. It's going to be that money spent before you even get it. Okay. Um, see it all the time. You know, and all of these situations are able to be fixed if we had just prepared ourselves and had money and savings. But guess what? It's not a priority. So there you have it. Hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, if you want 15 minutes of my time, my email's in the description. Send me an email with a phone number and I will give you a call. Have a wonderful day.